Welcome everyone to our conversations today uh, between myself and people that I work with in my professional and personal life, as well as my ministry. Uh, today, I wanna welcome a very close friend who I consider a brother in my life, my dear brother, Stephen Bingaman. Uh, Stephen is the executive director of the Outdoor Church, which is a ministry here in the Boston metro area that focuses in on the city of Cambridge where we serve those who are in unhoused situations or people who are engaged with the streets in some way. Uh, Steve has been also a very close friend of mine. We journeyed together in our Masters of Divinity uh, at Boston University School of Theology. Uh, Stephen and I also are very much connected in other ways, but our ministry speaks to what Walter Wink talks so deeply about, the domination system. And I thought we would begin with Steve and a conversation about the outdoor church, about his ministry, and a, a, a conversation about sort of this work of the outdoor church that I feel very much connected to. I wanna be explicit that I'm also on the board of the outdoor, outdoor church um, in service to the unhoused and those on the streets. So welcome today, Stephen. I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to share your insights uh, about your experiences with this ministry. Thank Stephen, you so much. And I also wanna mention that Stephen um, is not only my personal spiritual director, but he is also uh, uh, in ministry uh, with his denomination, uh, the Presbyterian Church. So did you want to add anything, Stephen, that I've missed? No, no, I think you've given me a nice introduction. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so about the outdoor church. The outdoor church in Cambridge was started in 2003. Uh, by a uh, UCC, newly ordained UCC pastor and a newly ordained Episcopal deacon. And the purpose was to allow a space for homeless, and specifically at that time, the chronically homeless people, to be able to have a space to gather and hear the Word of God. So over the last 18 years, uh, the ministry has... Uh, uh, stayed pretty much at its core of bringing the word to God and creating a space for um, the chronically homeless. Uh, but it's also uh, sort of expanded to deal with uh, people who are unhoused, which is different from chronically homeless, uh, to people who are just uh, in low income situations. And uh, our ministry is basically, uh, we provide worship services at the moment twice a week. The purpose of generally of what we do is we, we attempt to uh, meet our community where they are at and who they are. I, you know, I wanted to maybe invite a bit of Wink into this. Um, Wink talks quite a bit about uh, the domination system and how the domination system, uh, which is connected to the fallen powers, um, dehumanizes and has a tendency uh, to amplify our separateness, right? Um, that, that in the fallenness of the powers, there is this this ongoing process of dehumanization. Um, and, and as we anticipate the book club that's gonna be coming at the end of this month in February, uh, we're reading about how Wink structures the domination system and how Jesus is in a way, right? Uh, a powerful way and a powerful model and example for us uh, to to nonviolently engage with the, the domination system towards its redemption, right? Towards the redemption act, the redemptive act of, of saving the powers, redeeming the powers. Um, and I, I wanna I want us to dwell with how the outdoor church and the ministry of the outdoor church engages with this domination system um, and nonviolently 
seeks to transform it, right? In ways that aren't always um, explicit, but are connected to um, a ministry of care and in a ministry of wholeness or making one whole. And I, I want to just lift up something from Walter Wink's uh, autobiography, My Struggle to be Human. I'm just going to read this chapter, and I'm curious what you think of it, Stephen. Um, and Walter Wink writes on 150 in his autobiography, My Struggle to be Human, one editorial statement by Matthew gives us rare insight into what at least one evangelist thought about, quote unquote, the son of man. In the story of the healing of the paralytic, Matthew 9, 2 to 8, Jesus had sa just said that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Wink writes, in reporting the acclamation of the crowd, Matthew makes this astonishing statement, and he quotes, and they glorified God who had given such authority to, end of quote, and here we would expect Matthew of all people to finish the clause with Christ, or at least Jesus. Instead, Wink writes, he has human beings, Matthew 9, 8, that Hebrew equivalent would be bene adam. The human being is not then restricted to Jesus, but includes his disciples, and indeed anyone who is in relationship with the process of becoming whole. For me, this paragraph in Wink's autobiography reflects what he's writing in these upcoming chapters that we're reading for this book club um, in The Powers That Be, where Wink is inviting us each of us, uh, to consider our role, right, our call in this space um, to support, right, this relationship with becoming whole, right, becoming whole again, especially when we are living in spaces where there's consistent dehumanization. And when I think of the outdoor ministry, the outdoor church's ministry and the ministry on the streets, I, I witness, I've witnessed you, for instance, um, be in relationship to the unhoused or the homeless or the people who are on the streets participating, but more importantly, the people who are volunteering too, right? The people who are from our 40 plus member churches that support this outdoor ministry, that, that in one way, the domination system separates us, right? Like sort of takes us away from each that we forget our belonging to each other. And through this ministry, I've witnessed how the ministry powerfully reconnects us to each other and reminds us of our humanness. And in that wrestling, in that struggle that Walter Wings talks about, like that his whole title of his book, My Struggle to Be Human, in our wrestling to rehumanize, right? To remind us of our humanness, right? In our woundedness, in our brokenness, right? That in, in that relationship, right? We remember our belonging and which this is the power I think of the outdoor church. And I was wondering if you could speak a little bit to that ministry and to that sort of what that, that theology of the outdoor church. Yeah, so, <clears throat> Yeah, you've hit right sort of on, I think, the, 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 the core essence of what the outdoor church is. It's, it's bringing uh, disparate communities together and trying to break that boundary of those communities and to that we can all be one. Um, <clears throat> so you think of the dominant culture, the dominant church, and um, just as a, a point of reference, you'd be surprised at what people's initial opinion are mm -hmm. of someone who is homeless, someone who's unhoused, or just people who are low income, who have less than every, than, than, than um, uh, would have less. And, and I think that a lot of people you know, try to have a hard time grasping how their life, you know, 
why this particular community can't order their lives the way that their lives are ordered. (laughs) A woman said to me the other day, uh, as I was um, trying to coordinate some sandwiches to be picked up on uh, last Saturday, she said, well, I hope it won't be so cold. You'll be able to do this. And I said, well, you know, we sort of, you know, when it gets really cold, we can go inside the foyer at the, um, at the MBA TA station. And so it takes a little bit of the wind away and the chill away. And she goes, well, you know, it'd be really, I bet you could find a church that you could go into and rent. And I, I was like, no, that's, that's not the thing. That's, that's, they're coming into what you, what we think or what the dominant thing people think is the way to be, not what they want. Um, they like the space that they have. They like the way that they order their lives. And so what we need to do is sort of find a way that we can bridge this. And by bringing people together uh, and offer, meeting them and, 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 and recognizing their personhood by handing them a sandwich, um, by handing them a pair of gloves, by letting them rifle through and find a scarf for themselves, or to get a juice, um, is just recognizing them as being human, and they're part of us, and they're with us. Um, sort of a, I did an outreach with a uh, new church probably two years ago, and this woman, after she did it, she posted a Facebook on the church's uh, Facebook page, and it said, you know, we we all gathered to go out to share the love of God with this particular community. And they were so gracious. And every time we handed them a sandwich, they would say, God bless you. And here we are trying to uh, give the word of God to them. And they were in turn giving God's love back to us. I mean, to me, that's exactly what, what we're trying to do here is to, to bring people together um, and to break these barriers that say uh, there isn't necessarily a way to order a life and that we should be open to other ways, but mostly be open to, to people who, you know, their lives have just taken a different road. They've been a little bit more difficult. They've, 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 they've uh, bumped up against some hurdles that they just couldn't get over. <laughs> And that's what put them where they're at. Um, And and the stories, once you spend time with this particular community, they are all our life stories. They are all, and and, and when they tell them to you, you you can understand them. You can understand where they're at. Absolutely. The the, the machinist who, who was in an industrial accident and lost his fingers who uh, unemployment ran out. <laughs> he lost his job. He started to drink. Yeah. It became uncomfortable in his home. His family asked him to leave. He left. 20 and years it, later, he's living on the street. Yeah. <laughs> and it's precisely this, right, brother, is this idea that we, how do we remember people's stories, right? That it's not this one narrative, but multiple narratives that dwell within each of us. And that if we could connect to each other in these ways, we would understand the context more deeply, that we wouldn't dehumanize that human being um, being, uh, being in the streets or unhoused, that we would recognize that context, meet them where they are, right? To be present with them, with them right? Because it can not only just transform them, but us, right? There's this ongoing transformation that also confronts the domination system, that confronts this larger meta-narrative of, hey, this is your single story, right? And instead nuances it, right? Actually dimensionalizes it so that we can wrestle with what it means to be human in this context, Um, which I really appreciate about the outdoor church. It's really highlighting those stories, right? But it's not only just highlighting those stories, right, brother? It's actually bringing people together, right? It's just like this active engagement 
right? You're no. not just you're not just dropping in right on Massachusetts Avenue in Cambridge, right? It is an ongoing relation. You know what I what I really appreciate about what the ministry is about is this is it's, it's not a one time thing. It's not what I what I would consider charity or needs. It's really being present, radically present with radical hospitality in an ongoing relationality. That to me is church, right, brother? Like to me, right, what I always, what Wink invites me to think about consistently, right, is for us to remember what church is, what it means to come together as a community. What does it mean? The ecclesia that we learned in Div School together, right? The early church for us, right, as Christians. Right. And I would argue in many other faiths, right, when people gather, right, when people gather, right, that's in relationship, ongoing relationship and knowing that relationship isn't perfect. Right, brother, like our relationships, right, aren't always perfect. And that ministry is not about being perfect, but being in relationship. Right. Yeah. There was a sort of a cool story to sort of reflect that there was a fellow who was part of our community. And he got uh, he got jammed up with some with, with uh, some uh, with the judicial system, and he ended up spending uh, uh, you know three or four months at uh, Bill Ricca, right in the, in the county jail. Mm -hmm. And you know we hadn't seen him, and we sort of knew that that's where he's at. And the first he got out on a Friday, yeah, and he came to see us on Sunday, yeah. And I saw him walking down the street and I was like, yo, I mean, and he came up and he hugged me and he says, I knew you would be here. I knew I would see you. I mean, for me, uh, that was just like, wow, here's a guy which was really gets back to your, your passage of Matthew 9. I mean, here we are, you know, stand up and walk now. I'm here for you. Yeah. Right. Uh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it, that, no, it gives me goosebumps. And every time I read that part of Wink's autobiography, I always go back to that passage because Wink is reminding me of this, like reminding me of how how Jesus, because I'm a Christian, like Jesus is is the model for us. Right. Um, and that Jesus is not just speaking, saying, hey, it's just through me. It's like me and you and all of us together. Right. That we, right, we, even though we're wounded, like Henry Nouwen says, right, we, we are wounded healers, right? We, each of us, right, each of us are wounded healers, right? And, and then once you get to know that, that you know, and, and, and we're all wounded, but the strength of this community is just amazing. I remember... You know, I was being sort of quizzed on some ordination questions by my church. And and someone said to me um, once, doesn't this ministry depress you? I said, no, no, this ministry inspires me. Yeah. And like I got these looks in people's face. I said, when somebody walks three and a half miles to come to service on Sunday with everything they own on their back, in the snow, brother. In right? the snow or the rain or whatever. Yeah, whatever right? condition that's yeah. out. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you look around, how many of you would do that? I mean, forget about that. I mean, you know, uh, right. you know, the car is broken. Would you walk three and a half miles to come here today? Yeah. No, probably not, right? Yes. I mean, right. so I, I – Sundays for me are just – it doesn't matter what happened during the week. It is the most joyous – two hours that I could possibly spend. And it's not like we see everybody all the time. I mean, it's just like normal church. I mean, you know, sometimes you can't get there and you can't get there on time or you, you're messed up or whatever, but it's just so beautiful to, to, to see our community. And they love being there too. Yeah. They love being there too. And, you know, they're not all friends. <laughs> they're not all friends. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of conflict, but for the time that we spend together, yes, uh, it's just a beautiful moment that we we'll share, and it's a moment where they can sort of reflect on 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 their own lives, 
and allow and, and gives them a moment to, you know, away from all the stuff that they got to deal with, to spend a moment and to to pray, to 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 channel Jesus, to 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 you know pray for redemption, to prevent, to pray for for that uh, better life, to 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 pray for them, to to. Uh, uh, overcome some of their uh, uh, brokenness to heal, um, and it's you know, and I w- I wouldn't w- we're not outcome oriented. I mean, we're not looking to put people into housing. We're not looking to get people jobs or whatever. We're just there at the moment. However, it is a really beautiful moment when someone who was participating, who was a member of the community comes and sees us after not having been there and said, you know, I stopped drinking. I got a job and I got housing. And it's been that way for three months. And you look and you just say, oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. And they came back. Yeah. To say that, you know, we we were with them. And some of the worst times. And you know what, brother, you know, this is why, it, you know, I appreciate, you know, the fact that the ministry is not outcome oriented, but is really in process, because in a way, that's the work. The work is for us to be in process together so that whatever comes will come. Right. But the work, the work that we do together, the work of being really deeply present with each other that allows for respite, that allows for prayer, that allows for us to work through things. Right. So that. You know, whatever comes in the future, like this human being who says, oh, wow, I'm now housed. And but this 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 community, right, was in process with me, that I was in process with that community. Right. And that all of us who are connected to this ministry are transformed so that we can transform this domination system, right, that we can continue to do the work without necessarily being wedded to the outcome. Right. That we in our uncomfortable relationships, right, the relationships that are not perfect, the relationships that we share with each other that that can be broken. Right. That we're, there's woundedness in our stories. Right. That we can come together. Right. And be in relationship in consistent relationship. Right. In that process, right, I feel that we're called, this ministry calls all of us, each of us, right, um, to do that work. And, you know, towards, right, this idea that, hey, I don't know what the outcome will be, but my intention is that I, I hold intention, right? My hope is tied to us together in redeeming the powers, right? Us together, right? In doing this work of what I would call social justice, equity, whatever you want to name it, right? But in reality, it's with us together that we can transform the powers. And that's where I feel like this ministry really centers around. Yeah, so it's it, you know it's also cool when when people sort of come upon us. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, some guys walking down the somebody's walking down the street, or someone pops up the escalator, and they see us gathered there drinking yeah. coffee, and people are sitting around eating sandwiches or whatever, and they're like, "What?" So it's you know, brother, are you hungry? Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you like a bag of food? Yeah. How about a cup of coffee? Yeah. And then it's like, who are you guys? What do you guys do? Yeah. You know, what is this? Right. And then you tell them. And then two weeks later, he comes back. Yeah. And then three weeks later, another three weeks passes and he comes back by with a friend. Yeah. And it's just because, you know, that's when they are just human. I mean, they were just just average. This, you know, in a, in a sort of in the in the dominant culture church, we would expect that all the time. How many times would that happen to someone who lives on the street? Right. You know, here, come, be with us. We want we want you. Yeah. We're not going to step over you. We're not going to run away from you. We're not going to walk across the street from you. We're not going to look down as we pass you. Right. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we want to be with you. <laughs> and all of a sudden, there's this sort of, well, yeah, 
Yeah. And it, to, to see, you, I mean, you can see a visible, you know, and I don't know if it's so intentional that saying they want to be with me, but it's sort of like you could see them in their eyes. Yeah, this is what it's like. This, this is what everything should be like, right? It's, 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 um, it's cool. And, and the funny thing is this isn't intentional on our part. I mean, I'm not, we're not trying to do that. That just happens. It just happens by being there and just welcoming and saying, you know, I'll help you. This is what I can do for you today. I have a cup of coffee for you. I have the word of Jesus for you today. That's it. Right. And that, that's where I deeply appreciate the ministry of the, the outdoor church, right? It's this radical hospitality in this, in this absolute presence saying, right? Where there, it's emergent, right? It's emergent, it's iterative. It is, it's in this constant state of becoming, um, which I appreciate. And in yeah. that work, really, I do feel, right? In that work, as I witness this work, uh, I do feel that it, it, it does what Wink does, what, what Wink says. It, 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 it usurps this the fallenness of the powers. It, it, it mitigates that impact that has on each of us. And in a way, reframes, reformulates, renews, um, and helps us redeem in those spaces. You know, for, for me, that belongingness, that community, that deep connection, that openness, in a way, this radical curiosity, right, for each other's stories, with each other's stories, in each other's stories, right, helps renew us as a community and, and reconnects us to each other in our own struggles to be human, right, in our own yeah. work, and our own wrestling. Yeah. Um, and so that's the, you know, I really appreciate your insights into this, uh, Stephen, and, and sharing with us the ministry of the Outdoor Church um, because it really speaks to what Walter Wink is talking about in uh, in the domination system and how Jesus, the work of Jesus and Jesus as a model, even if you're not Christian, right, that Jesus is one of our, right, the people that for us as Christians um, sort of look to. Uh, it, it, is, it is a wonderful model for us and for others, right, of how... That's, that's, he was doing it. He would this, he had, he, he had the original outdoor church. <laughs> yeah, and that's it, right? And that's a reminder for each of us and why I consistently feel called into that ministry with you and with others, that we're not ministering to people, we are ministering with, right? With, it is, with. It is a with all ways and with in process right and that that again that process is not easy right it is consistently we're wrestling with it we're struggling with it but we're with each other in that and all of our stories are whole as we seek to become whole together so yeah Stephen, thank you so much for being oh, you're here welcome. You're today welcome. and sharing your stories and yeah. sharing your ministry with our community at FOR um, and and the book club here at the um, the Walter Wink Book Club. So I really appreciate your time today, Stephen. Yeah, thank, uh, thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome.